For the swing chapter of this course, it's a good idea to strengthen and condition your grip and shoulders in preparation. And depending on your level, this can either be done as a warm up before exercise or as a workout in itself to condition you over several weeks or months to prepare the body to be able to do some of the more dynamic movements taught. These are the seven exercises. Shoulder retractions, side to side rocks, head taps and pocket slaps, shoulder twists, oblique crunches, juggling monkeys and straight swings. Before we begin though, there are four key points I want you to consider the whole time you are hanging on the bar. Firstly and most importantly, if possible and where necessary, use some sort of support underfoot so you can take some of the weight off of the upper body. The goal with these exercises isn't to work at our max ability, but to show the body that it is safe in each position. We want to find the right Goldilocks level of challenge, but I would always err on the side of more support rather than less. I personally still use support for many of these, especially when warming up. The way to do this is to make a setup where you can reach the bar with the hands and have the feet still reach the floor or a step like this. Then it's up to you how much you take in the legs. This might vary from exercise to exercise. The trick is to become sensitive to the body's reaction to each position. We don't ever want it to feel like it is locking up without our command or straining on for dear life to complete the exercise. Secondly, focus on shoulder retraction by pulling them down and back as much as possible. The deeper we can pull our shoulders in, the more supported and safe they will be. This retraction action engages and strengthens all the supportive stability muscles used in hanging. Third, keep your stomach engaged. We wanna keep our lower body connected the whole time, so we need our transverse abdominus, the belt around our middle, to stay switched on. When you do this correctly, you should feel the front of your ribs tucked down and the front of your hips pulled up and your belly button pulled back towards your spine. And lastly, you want to overgrip the bar like so. We're not just hanging purely on our fingertips, but wrapping the palm around as much as it will go. Now with these in mind, let's begin. Exercise one, shoulder retractions. One shoulder at a time, pull the shoulder back and down as far as it will go into its socket and hold for a few seconds. Take as much weight into the feet as necessary to feel this action happen. You should feel the side of your torso want to get involved too, and you should let it. You may want to do anywhere from five to 10 reps per side. Side to side rocks. Similar to the shoulder retractions, but with more of a focus on how the torso controls the hips. Pull down on one shoulder and lift the hip up on that same side using the lateral core. This is a crucial movement to understand when it comes to swinging on monkey bars. Again, five to 10 reps per side is a good aim, but I'd rather you be feeling in your body rather than focusing on counting reps. So enough just to feel engaged, but not burnt out. Head taps and pocket slaps. Another great prep for monkey bars is head taps. Again, taking as much weight as necessary in the feet and pulling the shoulder into the ribs. With the other hand, you're going to tap yourself on the head. The aim here is to be able to do it without swinging. And the key to that is to shift your weight across using the same technique from the previous exercise so that your center of mass is directly below the gripping hand when you let go of the bar with the tapping hand. The progression up from this is to slap your pocket, again aiming to do it 100% under control and with zero swing. Three to five reps each side per set is a fine target. Shoulder twists. The ability to control rotation of the body by the shoulder whilst hanging is almost entirely overlooked as a vital function of it. But in my opinion, you will not be able to maintain balance and control throughout monkey bar swings unless you can do this, which makes it a high valued biomechanical ability. Pulling the shoulder back and down, try to steer away from your armpit and drive rotation like so. The action should happen from muscles and not from swing. However, I cannot determine which muscles exactly make it happen. So I will leave it for you to discover for yourself and inform me if you know. Once rotated all the way, try to rotate back to neutral and then change sides. Anywhere from three to five of these on each arm is great with as much breaks or support as you need. Oblique crunches. This one is an escalation of the side to side rocks where we try to bring the knees even higher with each contraction of the side body. You can also combine it kind of like pocket slaps and touch your elbows to your knees like so. Again, five to 10 reps is good, but don't count, just feel. Monkey juggle. Using a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball like this, Throw the ball up from one hand, swap grips and catch it with the other. You can do this with the feet down to begin and then for those who are ready, try to attempt it purely from a hang like this. 
Attempt to maintain control and swing as little as possible. Play until you drop it and maybe have three or so goes and see what your max score is. Finally, we have straight swings. Wholly overlooked as a great functional exercise for grip, shoulder strength and core. If you feel safe to do so, you're going to just swing backwards and forwards multiple times. Drive from the toes by pulling the legs up and kicking them out in front of you and at the back of the swing, try to gain height by kicking your heels back and arching your spine. It's a rather intuitive technique that you will either have naturally or it may take a few sessions to figure out the timing, but the body will get there if you just show up each time. The main mistakes happen here when the upper body and the lower body are out of sync and you can end up just flopping in place like this. Try to let the feet lead the body. The shoulders don't actually do much here. Five to 10 swings is plenty per set. Programming. As mentioned, I'm very much in favor of intuitive programming for how your body feels. So just spend some time going through each exercise and take breaks from the bar as and when necessary. You could do one round as a warm up or two to three rounds of it as a healthy, well-balanced workout in itself. Use support and feel free to edit and remove exercises or add your own too. As you do it, remember to revisit the four keys I listed at the start. Regress with support, pull your shoulders back and down, engage your core by tucking the ribs and lifting the hips, and overgrip the bar. There you have it, a workout to give you the grip ability of a gibbon.